السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا Welcome to this video guys My name is Yaqat Saman Hope you guys are having a fantastic day Right, we are going through Mukhtasar um, al-Quduri If you guys are the The ones who have been following me from the beginning Then hit the like button Put in the comment What was the first video of Quduri that you have been following from Put in the video inshallah And if you are new to the channel as well Put in the video as well Right, so let's get on with this. So, Babu Abay al Fasid. So, Fasid, we've done this word before. It means something which is defective. If a can ahadul iwad al iwad, it means something which is a substitute. Substitute. Okay, substitute. O kilahuma. Okay, let me make this a bit bigger. Just so that I can get this all. Okay, or kilahuma, or both of them, muharraman means prohibited. Falbay of fasidun kalbay ibil meita meita means an unslaughtered animal. Un, unslaughtered animal. Or bidam, or blood. Bil khamar, wine, khinzid, pork. The kana gheer mumluk, owned. This word has come before. Kalhurri, free person, bay, ummil walad. Ummil walad has come before many times. Uh, let me know in the comments what it is. Mudabbar, Mukatab, right? These are types of slaves. These have all come before. Put it in the comments if you know. Fasidun. Fasid means defective. La yajuzu bay'u samaki fil ma'i qabla an yastad wa la al tayr. Tayr. So yastad. Istada yastadu. It means to fish. Yeah, the act of fishing is from the root letters sayd. Okay, sada yasidu. Bab ifti'al. وَلَا بَيْءَ الطَّيْءَ And tell me, how does the, where does the ta come from? You guys know where this ta comes from? Let me know. وَلَا بَيْءَ الطَّيْءَ Tayr means bird fil hawa, means in the air. وَلَا يَجُوزُ بَيْءُ الْحَمْلِ حَمَلْ means fetus. Fetus. فِي الْبَطْنِ In the belly. وَلَا النِّتَاج It means, um, it means fetus, something which is born. Okay. Uh, in the fetus. وَلَا بَيْءَ اللَّبَن لَبَن means milk الضرع means udder udder uh, وَلَا okay is udder udder with one D or two Ds let me know in the comments if I've, if I've made a mistake here udder وَلَا السُوف سُوف means wool عَلَى ظَهْرِ الْغَنَمِ ظَهْرِ means back of the sheep وَلَا يَجُوزُ بَيْءُ الْذِرَاعٍ ذراع means this word has come so many times yard or thawb means cloth جذع it means a, a a beam. A beam. في سقف وضربة القانس. قانس means a hunter. Hunter. Darb means strike. ولا بيء المزابنة. مزابنة. This is basically what مزابنة is. So I'll explain it when I explain. وبيء الثمر على النخيل بخرسه approximation. تمرن ولا يجوز بيء إلقاء الحجر. Okay, let's do this bottom line there. The only إلقاء means to throw. حجر means stone. ملامسة means to touch. ولا يجوز بيء ثوب من ثوبين. Cloth from two cloths. Okay, so let's have a look now exactly what is happening over here. Yeah, what is the situation with all of this? In fact, let's do the tarkib of this. So it makes it a bit smaller. Do a bit of a tarkib. Okay, right. So, Babu Bayi Al Fasidi. Al Bayi Al Fasid. Okay, so, Ida Kana Ahadu. So, this is obviously Hada, Mubtada. And then Ida Kana Ahadu Al Iwadaini. This is the ism of Kana. Iwadaini is times two. O kilahuma. Kilahuma is atafan to ahadu. Muharraman. This is the khabar of kana. Falbay'u mubtada. Fasidun is the khabar. Kalbay'i bil maytati. O bil dami. O bil khamri. O bil khinziri. Wa kathalika idha kana ghayra mamlukin. So this is again the khabar. Kalhurri wa bay'i. 
ها وبيء أمي الولد مضاف مضاف لي أول دوي مدبري مكاتبي فاس ها سوري ما من مستيك هي كالبيء بالميتة أو بالدم أو بالخنزير وكذلك إذا كان غير مملوك كالحر وبيء هم اسمه إنجليز بيء I think <تصفيق> وبيء أمي الولد مضاف مضاف لي مبتدا والمدبر والمدبر والمكاتب فاسد نسد خبر ولا يجوز بيء السمك مضاف مضاف لي بكمز دفاعل في الماء قبل أن يصطاد so this could be يصطاد أو يصطاد I think make it يصطاد يصطاد لبع because it's supposed to be much holes in that we don't know who's doing it so قبل أن يصطاد ولا بيء الطير في الهواء مضاف مضاف لي عطف onto the original بيء السمك ولا يجوز بيء الحمل في البطن ولا النتاج ولا بيء اللبن في الضرع ولا بيء الصوف على ظهر الغنم ولا يجوز بيء الذراع من ثوب ولا بيع جذع في سقف ولا يجوز ولا يجوز بيع ولا يجوز ضربة القانس and this can be ضربة T if you make it out of onto جذع or it can simply just be you know out of onto بيع ولا بيع Uh, in fact, yeah, I think we'll make it like that. Let's make it into ضربتي, right? Because they make it out of onto جذع. Yeah, so لا بيع ضربة القانس مضاف مضاف لي ولا بيع المزابنة وهو بيع الثمر على النخيل بخرسه تمرا ولا يجوز البيع بإلقاء الحجر ولا ال ولا يجوز البيء بالملامسة is out of onto القاء okay. ولا يجوز بيء ثوب من ثوبين so this is times two alright so let's check out what this is saying now what's happening in this masla what's the what's the masla all about so if I zoom this up this here okay so this is now the chapter of بيء الفاسد now there's actually two types of bait that you have over here. You have something called a batil bait. Okay, batil, and you have something known as a fasid bait. Okay, so fasid. A batil bait is a bait in which one of the conditions of the of the definition. Remember, mubadala tulmali bilmal bitaradi. It's missing. Okay, so if one of these components is missing, then the bait is called batil. All right, so batil basically means it does not go through. It's not a bait. And so, so the rule is this. If you have, let's say, someone selling, so you have someone selling an, an item, if this item that they are selling is considered to be a haram item, something that Allah has forbade, prohibited, whether one of them is prohibited or both of them is prohibited, so you got, let's say, um, something haram, and you got some, let's say, cash. Obviously, cash is allowed, or whether you got both them that's haram. This bait will be called batil. Okay, this is going to be called batil. So he says, إِذَا كَانَ أَحَدُ الْإِوَدَيْنِ when one of the two, one of the two iwadain. Iwadain means substituting exchangeable items. أو كلاهما أو both of them. So let's say cash over here is okay, but let's say we had a haram item. Um, so if I was to, I don't know, let me just draw some haram item over here. So this is also, let's say, a haram item, pork or wine. Yeah, so it can be pork, wine, yeah, e etc. All these are haram items. Um, محرماً فالبيء فاسد Now, it says fasid, but really what he means is batil. Okay, just remember that. When you do hidayah, inshallah, we'll cover that. So, 
He means fasid, but he really means but. Sometimes the fuqaha, they use words interchangeably. It's batil. Okay, kalbay'i, like selling mayta. Mayta is unslaughtered animal. Right, so Allah in the Quran prohibits pork and wine and unslaughtered animals. Oh, with them, or selling it with wine. Yeah, so wine is not allowed, or blood, or with khamar wine, or with khinzir, or selling it with khinzir. Um, yeah, so this is not allowed. Right, this is not allowed. now, however, according to the Hanafis, let me just explain something to you guys. If, however, uh, the goods. So, if I, if I draw this out, I think it'll become much more clear. So, if you have haram for versus haram, haram versus cash, and uh, haram versus halal. Right, so we mean by halal non cash. Non cash. Then these two are considered to be, these two are considered to be batil. But this one is actually considered to be fasid. Okay, this one is considered to be fasid. Meaning, let's say someone sells wine in exchange for a mobile phone. Right, so wine, supposed to be a bottle of wine there. Uh, for a mobile phone. Right, so you've got a mobile phone there. Da, 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 phone. This transaction will actually be facet. Because what happens is the person will have to give the mobile phone, but the wine will not be allowed. You give the cash value of the phone. Yeah, so the cash value of the phone. Okay, so that will be given. This is only where it's considered to be facet. So uh, Imam Quduri, when he says فَالْبَيْءُ فَاسِدٌ right, What he possibly is referring to, some say, is that this scenario is fasid, but this scenario, the top scenario, that is considered to be batil. This is batil. This is not allowed absolutely. Whereas the other one below, that is actually technically will go through. It's a defective contract. So a defective contract, although it's sinful to get involved in defective contracts, but Legally, the definition مُبَادَلَةُ الْمَالِ بِالْمَالِ بِالْتَرَادِ has taken place. And he can't give the wine. Instead of giving the wine, he has to give the cash value of the phone. So let's say the phone is worth £500. You're going to give £500 for the phone. Okay. All right. So let me know if you understand if that makes sense. Because this is sometimes students, they don't understand this. And then it becomes very difficult to understand. So the Hanafi say, as long as uh, there's no cash involved. Why is this? Because cash is something that's not important in a contract. So if cash is not important, it means the importance or the light shines on the haram then. And when you shine light on haram, when you make the contract around the haram, it's as though you're giving importance to the haram. So this is considered to be imp uh, impermissible. But if you have a non-cash, a halal item versus a haram item, you can shed the light, you can focus the light on the halal item, and then the contract can be fine, and all you have to do is change the haram item. Right, that's what they say. Okay, so next. Now, uh, likewise, if a person was to sell something which is like a free person. So if a person sells a free person over here, like for example, a free person versus cash. This is also considered to be haram because it's not, it's not something which is, although a free person is not haram in itself, but a free person is not someone that can be sold. So this also is called batil. Yeah, this is also batil. So kadalika likewise ida kana ghayr mamlukin kal hurri. Yeah. Likewise, if one of the items is considered to be a non-slave, yeah, a free person, then it's also considered to be batil because it's not mal, right? The definition of mal doesn't occur. But if you sold a free person for a halal commodity, then it will be considered to be fasid. Does that make sense? Okay, I think we're getting there. Right, what about selling a what about selling a uh, ummul walad and and these kind of things? What's the what's the deal with this then? Yeah, what happens with ummul walad and, and all those? So, if you remember when we talked about, talk about slaves, slaves basically are um, of, of of different types. There's there's four types of slaves that you need to be familiar with. Okay, so you have, say for example, in fact, this is not a nice color. I don't know why I chose this color. 
It's two different color. Okay, so let's say, for example, this is a slave. This is a full slave, 100% slave. Right now, this 100% slave can actually become a partial slave. So, for example, like you have someone who's known as a Umm al Walad. Umm al Walad is someone who the master has had sexual intercourse with. She's given birth, right? She's given birth. And now the master says, This child is mine. So, because of that, the status of the woman changes from a slave to a Umm al Walad, the mother of the child. That basically means that once the master dies, she'll now become free. So she's on her way to become free, so she can't be sold. This is an Umm al -walad. A free slave can also become a Mudabbar. A Mudabbar is basically someone who the master says, right, if I get it cured from this illness, or if I come back safely from my journey, you're free. So then the freedom is attached to this. So he's potentially going to become free as well at a later stage. Right, so he also is partial slave as well. Now. Right, so it's like a partial slave. And then a third one you have is a mukatab, right? So a mukatab is someone who the master has made a deal with that they will be free if they were to make a payment. Let's say, for example, £1,000 and you're free. So this is what we call a mukatab, right? So you have three types of these, you got three types of these slaves, right? So these are all partial slaves. And that's why because they're partial, you can't sell them. And if you do sell them, the transaction will be considered to be fasted. It's a fasted transaction, right? Uh, you know, exchange cannot be made and so forth. So, Bay'ul Umm al Waladi and Mudabbar and Mukatab is all considered to be fasted, right? Because of the problem with this, this whole transaction is problematic because they're almost going to be free. So, how can you exchange or you can't? Okay. Now, besides this, there are some other transactions that we need to be familiar with as well. So if I, uh, I don't know why I made that mistake there. Right, let's switch this over here. Okay, right. So let's say, for example, like there is some a water over here. And there is a fisherman. Yeah. And in the sea, there is this nice fish that are swimming around. Okay. And he says to everyone, right, if you give me, I don't know, 10 pounds, I will catch fish for you. 10 pounds for a fish. Right, 10 pounds. Now, if they are in here and he has to catch them, now, how? what's the chances that he can catch a fish? What guarantee can he give? If he can't guarantee that he'll get the fish, there's no guarantee then this bait is not allowed. It's a bait facet. Right? It's an impermissible bait. Why? Because he can't guarantee giving the fish to the buyers. All right. So this is why any transaction in which you can't guarantee giving the item to the people. Now, if, however, he's got fish tanks and he takes it out of the fish tank and he gives it to them, that's okay because he can guarantee it. So, لا يجوز بيء السمك في الماء قبل أن يصطاد or يصطاد. So, selling fish in the sea, in the water, before being able to catch them is impermissible. Once you've caught them and you've got them in a container, then you're allowed to sell them without a doubt because it's all about handing it over. Um, and, you know, imagine you could have some sort of, if you caught the fish but you attach them with strings and you could just press a button and the string would pull the fish in. That's also fine because you can catch them. The same ruling goes for if there's a person and this person says, all right, guys, there are some birds in the sky there are some birds in the sky. Uh, I will catch those birds for you if you give me 10 pounds. Yeah, so 10 pounds for a bird. Yeah, so can he catch those birds? Yeah, no, there's no guarantee that he can catch them. So because there is no guarantee that he can catch those birds, the same applies with like the fish. And it's not permissible to sell birds that are still in the air, you know, fly, flying around. However, if the fish, if the birds are caught, if they're trained, he can call them and they'll come to him. That's okay because there's a guarantee that the birds can actually be given to him. All right, so that's the second. All right, next. There was in the Jahiliya times, there was a practice of, there was a practice of selling the fetus inside the animal. So imagine, for example, like this is like, this is supposed to be an animal, okay. I don't know, do the females have horns or not? Allah knows the best. 
and inside of this animal there's a fetus. Yeah, this this is called the fetus, the hamal, in Arabic. And someone wants to sell to another person the fetus inside. He says, "I'm selling the fetus. It's not born yet, by the way. I'm selling the fetus. This is not allowed because you can't guarantee that it'll be born." First of all, you can't guarantee there is a healthy fetus inside of it, and then you can't guarantee it's going to be born. And so it's going to lead to disputes and arguments. So the whole of this is based upon what's the chances of there being a dispute and argument if this doesn't go through. So la yajuzu bayul hamli fil bottom. It's not permissible to sell the hamal, the fetus, in the belly whilst it's in the belly. Once it's born, then sell it as much as you like. Now, there was another stranger practice that people used to do in Jahiliya, which was they would sell the fetus of the fetus. Yeah, the fetus of the fetus. So the fetus is not born yet, and they would say, you know, when this fetus has another its own baby, I'll buy that. What a weird! Do you tell me in the comments how weird is that? In fact, they actually do it today with prize horses and prize animals. So prized animals, prized horses. What they do is they know that the the DNA of the animal is going to be really good. So what they do is they buy it already. They'll say, I'll take the fifth baby. I'll take the baby of the baby. Right, because it's considered to be like a very good. So la yaju, you can't even sell nitaj. This is called nitaj, okay? Yeah, nitaj is not allowed. Nitaj is basically the born, the unborn. Yeah, unborn of the unborn of the unborn. That's not allowed. Now, similarly, can you sell? Are you allowed to sell milk inside the udder? So let's say, for example, there is a an animal, and this animal obviously has an udder. Let's do like a pink udder. Right, udder. And maybe it has milk in there, maybe it doesn't have milk in there. And the guy's saying, I'm the guys, I'm selling one, I'm selling milk inside this udder. Who wants to buy milk in the udder? There might be milk, there might not be. You might squeeze it, a little bit comes out, nothing comes out. And people used to do a lot of cheating in them days, right? They used to kind of cheat people, tie the udder, make it look as though it's swollen up. And you know, I don't know, maybe in today's days they might put even inject it with Botox or something, steroids, just to make it look big. So this is not permitted. You can't sell milk whilst it's inside of the, the udder. If it's inside the udder, you can't sell. Once you've milked it, then you're allowed to sell it. And the same goes for You can't sell wool whilst it's on the back of the sheep. Once you cut it, then you can sell it. Yeah. So again, all of these are, it's going to cause fighting and arguments. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, I don't know. How do I make how do I make wool? Yeah, so imagine this is actually it's quite good. Blue wool. Yeah, this is an animal that's got blue wool. And you want to sell it while it's on the animal. No. You can cut it and then sell it, that's fine. But once it's on the animal, you cannot do that. This is not permissible. So wala ya juzu. Okay, next. Wala ya juzu bay udira in min thobin. You can't sell one meter or one one yard, one cubit, one yard of a cloth. You can't sell it whilst it's in the cloth. You have to cut it. The reason for this is because this is when the cloth is, um, this is when the cloth is not fungible. It's a non-fungible. It's a unique design. Yeah. So remember we talked about these cloths that have unique designs. So imagine it's like a, a carpet in the middle of a room, right? That's got some special designs on there. You know, I don't know. Some special designs, and you want one meter of that. So, where are you going to cut the one meter from? Are you going to cut the meter from here? Are you going to cut the one meter? I'm just using meters, but it's cubits. Are you here, here. Again, it's going to kind of cause argument because the different parts of the cloth would have different characteristics. So, you can't sell that. Yes, if it's a cloth which is all the same, right? This is just ubiquitous, it's all exactly manufactured, identical. This is something which is fungible cloth. You can cut it from any part, then it's totally permissible because any way that you cut it from is equal, 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 equal. It's all fine. Makes sense? So the idea is, is that if it's going to cause an argument between the seller and the buyer, then it's not allowed. Simple as that. If it's not going to cause an argument, if the seller doesn't bother, he goes, you know what? Cut it from anywhere you want. I'm totally fine. Then it's okay. Okay. The other thing you can't sell is beams in a house whilst it's still holding up the house. Right? So this is obvious, logical. This is. Imagine, for example, there is a house and there is a roof of the house. This roof is held up by a beam, right? A beam that goes across the house. Now, imagine, for example, someone wants to sell this beam. 
if you cut down the beam, what's going to happen? The house is going to collapse. The roof is going to collapse at least. So if the roof is going to collapse, then you can't sell it. You'd have to cut it out, right, and then sell it. So la bay'ul jid'in, nor can you sell a beam inside the roof of a house. Yes, if it's a collapsing house, they're going to demolish this house and they don't really kind of bother about this house. Then in this case, what's going to happen is, then it's fine. Yeah, then you can cut it, right? That's totally fine. So la bay'ul jid'in, same goes with anything in a property that's fixed into it, that if you did cut it out, it's going to damage the property and both are going to start arguing and fighting. All right, so this is why bait was jadin fi is not allowed. But if the house was collapsing and it was it was going to be demolished anyway, then it's okay. Well, next, wa darbatil qanisi. Darbatil qanisi is a bit like the hunter in that, that that fisherman that we talked about earlier. This guy, it's a bit like that, but in the jungle, some guy has put out some some traps, or some snares and nets, and says, "Look, give me ten pounds, and whatever's caught inside of it is yours." Now, sometimes they might do that. I'll throw this. This uh, I'll throw this uh, cage into the middle of the ocean and then what happens is whatever is caught at the end of the day is yours. Maybe there's something in there, maybe there's not in there, you wasted your money. It's a bit like a gamble, right? So this is not considered to be permissible. Darbatul Qanis, not allowed. Yeah, Qanis means hunter, strike, the striking of the hunter. Again, this is a bit like this fun fair kind of um, you know games where you pay some money and then it's like a chance whether you're going to get something or not. All these things are not allowed. Okay, next. And you're not allowed to do muzabana. Now, let me explain what, what muzabana is. It's actually given explanation. But let me elaborate on it a bit more. So imagine, for example, like I have a tree over here. Right, this is my tree. And this tree has fruit on there. Okay, it's got some nice apples, let's say, some red juicy apples. Uh, and so there's another person that comes and that person has picked apples. He has apples which are already picked in a basket. And he says, can we swap? Can we swap these apples for these apples? So you got the ones on the tree and I got. So this is an estimation this is. Why is this not allowed? This is because this is going to end up in being a riba. A riba is not allowed. Usury is not allowed. A riba is not allowed. So over here is going to be riba because... Remember, when we deal with riba, we'll talk about this in more detail when we do the chapter of riba. What happens is you are selling something in exchange for something else, which is identical, but you don't know one side could be more. There could be more apples here. There could be more apples here. And the chances of them being exactly identical is going to be very rare. So this is called muzabana. You cannot sell things via muzabana. Does that make sense? Everyone understand? Yeah, so muzabana is not permitted. Why? Because you are literally selling. Now, if they pick the apples and they exactly know how many apples there are in here, right? They know exactly the number of apples in here, then it's considered to be fine. If they know exactly how much they're getting and both sides are equal. Otherwise, not allowed. Yeah, so wahua, and this is bait of thamar, fruit, al nakhil, which is this fruit over here. Bikharsihi tamran. Okay, so bikharsihi tamran means in estimation of dates and i've given apples but you know you can just switch 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 the apples to dates so they used to have apples uh, dates on a tree someone would come with pick dates and say can we swap these two yeah because sometimes you know you might not need uh, pick dates you might want them to stay fresh in them they didn't have fridges so if they stay on the tree they're not going to rot okay and finally there were certain types of baits that were also not considered to be permitted. So, for example, لا يجوز بيت بإلقاء الحجر. Right. So, إلقاء الحجر. إلقاء الحجر was like a jahiliya sort of like a transaction, where you threw a stone and whatever it fell on, that's what you buy. It's like one of those fun fair kind of games. You throw a stone. If it falls on oh item number one, you win that. If it falls on B, you win that. Oh, and you didn't want this one, but it fell on that. Then it's tough luck. Again, this goes against the idea of of um, taradi, of you know mutual consent. They're happy. Okay? So it's going to lead to arguments. You know, you might want wanted this, but it unfortunately, turned out to be this. Sometimes, you know, when you throw that kind of coin in and it goes into the, that kind of puzzle, eventually it falls on something, and this is what you want. Well, mulamas and mulamas is touching. So what sometimes used to happen was in a in a trade, whatever you touched, you have to buy that. And sometimes they throw things at you, and whatever you caught, that's what you have to buy. You got no choice. So these kind of transactions are considered risk transactions. They're risk. They're like almost like gambling. You can say, not allowed. 
And finally, لا يجوز بيء الثوب من ثوبين It's not permitted to sell one cloth from two. So one cloth from two basically means, let's say someone is selling two cloths. And you'll say, I'll, I'll buy one of them. And you don't decide which one you want to buy. I'll just buy one of them. So if you don't decide which one you want to buy, so there's two cloths, right? So let's say cloth A and cloth B. And you're saying to the guy, mm, I'm not sure which one I want to buy, but I'm buying one of them. Yeah, again, this is going to cause argument because if you don't specify, if you say I'm going to, I'll, I'll choose one of them, right? This is allowed then. I'll buy one, I'll take it home, and then I'll choose, I'll give you the other one back. That's okay. But you cannot just buy one from two because it's like someone's got two cards, you say, you know what, I'll take both of them, but I'm only buying one. No, you can't do that. You've got to specify because then the other one's not your property. Okay, so, uh, and that's it. That's basically today's lesson. So let's go over this again then. So what do we learn in today's lesson? So first of all, questions for you guys. What is a bait facid? A bait facid is a transaction which is a defective transaction. What if both items are considered to be haram? What do you call that contract? Batil. What if one of them is haram and one of them is cash? What do you call that? You call it haram. Batil. What if one of them is haram and the other one is non-cash halal? Ah, then you call that facid. Okay, good. Um, what is the ruling of selling someone who is free? That's kidnapping, selling them is not allowed, human trafficking, impermissible at all, batil, trade does not even go through at all. What's the ruling of selling a ummul walad, a mudabbar, a mukatab? These are almost free slaves, so you cannot sell them, therefore the transaction is considered fasid. What about selling a bird that's in the sky? Is that okay? If you can't catch it, and you can't guarantee it, then it's considered fasid. Same with a fish in the sea. Okay, what about if a person wants to sell a fetus before it's born? Fasid. What about someone who wants to sell the unborn fetus? It's his fetus. That's going to, I don't know, possibly grow up in, in 10 years. Not allowed. Yeah. What are you, are you allowed to sell wool on the back of a sheep whilst it's still, still on the back of the sheep? No, you can't. You have to shave it off, then sell it. Okay, are you allowed to sell a, a, a piece of uh, beam in a roof? If it's going to harm the house, then no. Uh, if it's cut, then you can. Okay, what about selling uh, one yard of a cloth? Can you sell one yard of a cloth? No. If the cloth is uh, non-fungible, then no. If it's fungible, then you can. What about giving a person £10 pounds, um, and saying, uh, whatever you hunt is mine? No, that's not. If you if you give someone as a rent, like you hire them, you give them £10 pounds for, per day, hire them, that's okay, because that's hiring, that's a different ruling days. But if they guarantee you they're going to give you something, then that's not allowed. And what about Muzabana? What's Muzabana? Muzabana is where you have a tree that has fruit and the same fruit you have picked ones and you want to swap them. No, you can't do that. And what about this throwing stones on things and not allowed? And what does it mean two, one cloth from two cloths? Well, it means you buy two cloths, but you really are only buying one of them. You're paying for one. And the other one is doesn't belong to you. Okay, guys, Jazakumullah Khair. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Really enjoy uh, you guys, uh, your guys' company. And uh, obviously, you know, you guys will be sitting at home, chilling out, watching on your phones, watching on your iPads and computers. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. So if there are any questions, throw them in the comments below. And please check out the other videos that I make. Um, also, thank you to all my patrons for all of the support that you guys show. You are wonderful, beautiful people. You know, from the depths of my heart, I thank you for all the support you guys have shown. <coughs> my channel, I'm about to cough there. If you guys want to become patrons, support my channel on a monthly basis, then please consider becoming a patron. You can start off with anything you like. One pound, one dollar, alhamdulillah, it all means a lot to me. Um, and uh, that's it, guys. Share the contact with your contacts, and I will see you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.